we go. Everybody, the Dragons, Beer Club, Hot Dude Army, wherever you're watching it from, welcome to the Dragon Ship with RP Thor. I am joined today by our man Thor. How you doing, man? Ah, Skull, you savages out there. Good to be here. AJ doing great. Look at all these wonderful dragons here on the Dragon Ship. We're gonna have a good time today. You know, we are that rising tide that lifts all boats. Yes, we are. And we are also joined by Mike Steele out of Vegas. How you doing, brother? I'm fantastic. I'm a little tired today, but it's for the best of reasons because of last night. I can tell you're a <laughs> you dirty it's little doggy. <laughs> you dirty little doggy. <laughs> and Glenn's muted, so I'll skip over him. Let's go right to Paul. How you doing, man? I'm doing outstanding, dude. Just uh, just got done hosting uh, Rule Zero. We uh, we were you know slamming on the whamming, uh, which is always fun to do. So. <laughs> Awesome. And then Glenn just dropped out. Well, let's go to Nuke. How you doing, brother? Good. I'm good. I just, uh, yeah, just was on Paul uh, with Paul on uh, Rule Zero. It was fun. We talked about uh, dunking on the women, I guess. Golf. We talked about golf. We talked about golf today. Oh, that's the, the, that's the, oh and they're so sweet. I can see them. It's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The beauty, beautiful, beautiful nids. 
yeah the beautiful mids. Yeah, that, that was a that was a that was the least mid mid i've ever seen paul dude they're all mids dude they're all well, mids. I was gonna say, I love, yes i love but... paul's statement with that they're all mids and everyone freaks the fuck out i'll just, <laughs> I'll just so this. migs are magnificent yeah. <laughs> Everybody just wants a beautiful mid to call their own, right? Yes. That's <laughs> yeah. a mid here, a mid there, you know, here a mid, here there a mid. Yeah, I don't understand. Mid. Sixes and sevens are technically mids as well. True. It's all subjective. Yes, it's all subjective. Right. And, and without makeup, aren't they all mids, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. ah, upside down with the light off in the bedroom, all the same. Yeah, they're all sisters upside down. <laughs> right. <laughs> My dad always said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, they all oh, look man. light with the light off and upside down sign. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like we're all the same height when we're sideways. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they're all mid from the back. Ah, uh, the humanity. You just gotta love humanity. What a we're great. great. We're terrible. We're also <laughs> pretty amazing. It's pretty awesome. Well, I like to think we're all great money. men that are really effing bad boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. Girls we're, like a bad degenerates you know. in one way or yes. another, guys. How dare you? That's what I say. Way beyond a degenerate. I'm a total perv. That's why I tell nurse check all the time. I say, girl, girl, you know I'm a bad boy. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a good man. I'm not a good man. Sorry. No, You're not a good guy. man. No. <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a good person. I'm not a nice guy. Yeah. But, and now we are finally joined by Glenn Lawrence. Yeah, you get your shit figured out. Now we can finally talk about International Women's Month. Finally. No, it's International Hoes oh. Month. You better, guys, you guys better support these hoes. Glenn, down on the level a little, please. Guys, got to support Glenn, is this your hoes. tactic to win the, the president hoes. of the Manosphere? Hold on, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> right, I can't hear you right now. All right, go ahead. Yeah. I was say, is this your tactic to win the president of the Manosphere by pandering to the women? Man, look. Everybody in the man of stairs pandering to these hoes. So I might as well get in the game too. <laughs> get some immunity. Get some immunity. Like, 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 look, think about it. The trad cons are doing it. Ladies, your sins are forgiven. Your hoish ways are washed away. Right. You know, the society's doing it. Look, ladies, you ain't going to prison for crimes. No, you're hoes. We love you. So I'm just trying to get on the grift, man. I'm trying to make it's my new grift. Try to get some of them internet ducats. Right? Yeah, man. I'm trying to get like <laughs> some, I'm trying to get some of that YouTube love from the hoes. <laughs> you know, they're the ones that like spend all the money. <laughs> it's all about that Google money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get those Elon bucks. Thanks, Paul. No, I don't want them Elon bucks. I want these hoes bucks. <laughs> the ho bucks. It's like Starbucks, but better. Happy International Women's Month. <laughs> oh, what was the one nuke you posted with uh, the 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 parallel parking diagram? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that oh, one did pretty savage, well. Oh, you know what? Pretty you guys well. should ask Laurent. You guys should ask Laurent about the, the background that I made. It's called um, the Ambassador of Toxic Masculinity. Ask Laurent. He, oh, yeah. he he. We had a meeting recently, and uh, he knows what I'm talking about. That's a better title than president of the manosphere. I'm Ambassador telling you. Ambassador of toxic masculinity. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. given that amazing title by Laurent. Yeah. I'm going to have to give him thought, some uh, shit. He's supposed to be here sometimes. He wants thought, to be. Uh, I was going to say, I thought uh, Donovan Sharp already had like the ambassador to toxic masculinity title. Did he? I don't, I don't think so. I have I never Mike, heard Mike anybody but myself be called oh. that. So, And I'm not just being biased, hmm. but. Oh no, he's your Glenn daily dose of toxic never. masculinity. Yes, yeah. daily dose of toxic and masculinity. Yeah, yeah. He's exactly. like Doctor Toxic Masculinity, which is all true. <laughs> yeah, not. <laughs> no, Donovan's okay. good. I, I he's just, I was just texting there him right is. now too. Really? Yeah. It's, it's just it's still driving. Cool. <laughs> Parallel funny, parking. I remember, there. I remember when we International started. Women's Month. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I have a plea. But you know, what? we'll save that to the end. AJ, I don't want to ruin your show. Hey, it's it's all our show. It's it's all for oh, Thor. Yeah, but you did work. I could go on a rant. I did not do work. Actually, hey, now, more don't poke holes in the ship, Glenn. Remember, we take care of our ships. I know. That's why I said I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Speaking of Huds, where the where the hell is he? He helped yeah, put no, the outline he, together yeah. and didn't the, even show the, up today. That degenerate. The, the, the Look, he's, 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 doing, he's handling a lot of gay dating coach stuff and oh. baby, single mama dating coach stuff. Okay. Oh, All right. Hey, is he's not he's active not on Telegram right now, guys. He's not 
uh, I didn't see a link posted in the dragon ship. He's not. I, I put. I put. He's not in the dragon ship. Did you? Okay. Yeah. And he knows. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, way to go, AJ, for quickly. dropping the ball. Well, I didn't oh. know because I, I didn't. I didn't look. Wow, the AJ. Only way he can get in. Wow, you oh, had no. one job. One on, I'll, job. I'll, I'll send the invite link to him directly. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm not going to do it now. Not now that you like, now no. that you're sending me a link after you guys started the show. Fuck off! I'm not doing that. <laughs> I think he is too busy he with his that. robot. He should, he should I'm, I'm failing at core competencies and tools. <laughs> yeah, just today. One of the core topic. competencies you need as a man is to be able to send fucking links to people <laughs> so they could join your stream. <laughs> hey, man. Or at least have, have the balls to say you didn't send a link. Million that emails. It under copywriting crap you know what you that sounds ball. like a woman excuse and i understand we're an international woman's month but you don't need to sound like one i gotta go change my tampon okay <laughs> thank you please do i don't know i'm gonna show there, we, there we go is that better oh there you go be better sandwich if you had, uh, are, 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 are you wearing the making you that sandwich Hey, I want to shout out. To, I want to shout out the chat man uh looks okay. like we got p dubs in there rachel wilson like your stuff Good deal. Good deal. I see people in the chat. See quite a few of them. It's nice to have the chat in there. Uh, a few other folks going in there. Uh, Bradley Jones. And uh, that's awesome. The Keep the chat going. Filipino working at CBS. What a stud. Ray, Ray, Rachel Wilson, one of the few women that actually deserves to be honored in International Women's Month. Thank you very much. Shout out to Rachel. No. I see you. Good to have you on board, Rachel. The dragon Hi, ship. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> you know what? I bet you, I bet you, Andrew honored his woman for International Women's Re Month really well. He was probably like, Woman, I need a shot and a sandwich and a cigarette. <laughs> hey, I caught a, a cigarette. Clip, I caught yeah, a clip of Andrew for the first time. You know, we interacted with him on Rule Zero. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. but I, I, oh, yeah. You know, I, I don't follow a whole lot, but I actually caught a couple clips of his making some really reasonable arguments on with absolutely ridiculous um feminist philosophy he did a really good job man i was like very impressed that was now, great. look at that guys L yeah. look at that she's look at that dishes dishes yeah. that, that right there that's why she deserves an award for international women's month everybody give her a round of applause for being a real woman here i'm gonna do this just because of that <laughs> <laughs> you should have hit her with the Elena's. Oh no. <laughs> that's for the other. We, that's for the other. We can say you guys got it. You could do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. What we got today, AJ? Uh today we're gonna discuss uh core competencies that men should have and tools that they should have or know how to use if they don't have them, such as like, do you guys know how to change a flat tire? Hell, change your oil, operate a chainsaw. Basic stuff like washing your ass. So, mm. Let's get into that. <laughs> it is and, a good Yeah. And one thing I can say as a guy who has does a lot of work in his garage, you can never have enough 10 millimeter sockets of various sizes and shapes. Or 916s. <laughs> ten ten and, and you need, eight. You need, you, you need nine six yeah, eights, you need tens, and you need a nine sixteen. We need like 10 916s because those go missing. <laughs> All the time. So I got a funny story about that nuke, actually, on the boat, because most of the submarines fasteners are 9 sixteenths. A game uh, always yeah. steal them from RC dude. Yep. So I had supply order 14 millimeters instead because 14 and 9 mil are the same size. Yeah. And then nah, they come back smart. to the toolbox and they would see the 14 mils and be like, oh, and then run away. Nice. Yeah, that's outsmart them. Outsmart. That's a core competency: being smart, <laughs> outsmarting your, outsmarting your enemies. <laughs> and it's it's our innate like proclivity as a man to be a problem solver. So that right there is a core competency in and yeah. of itself. And out planning them, that's for sure. Yeah. But yeah. AJ, let's let's be real here. There's only one tool every guy needs. A hoe. A hose. <laughs> Those are pretty <laughs> useful. <laughs> they are very useful at times. Yeah, if you want to plant seeds, they're very useful. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what uh, you did. I like that. I like that. I like that what you did right there. Yeah. See? Hey. You know. Hey. hey. Uh, yeah, honestly, yeah, that's like that that um example used there, AJ, is just like 
a really good example of how men should take care of their problems, right? Instead of bitching to the leadership and then making it a whole big thing. And now we have more rules and HR gets involved or whatever thing happens. Instead, you're like, okay, I'm going to keep this at the lowest level and I'm going to solve it. And I'm going to not make excuses. I'm just going to use my intelligence and my craftiness. I'm going to order all these screws and, and fake them out. And guess what? I killed it. I squashed it at the lowest level and I get to have a laugh and I get to feel satisfied because I solved the problem. So that's a really good example yeah. of uh, that's a great way of handling that. So. So I would like to start by going around the horn, see what guys have for like core competencies and tools they believe that all men possess. Once again, guys, this isn't saying you're not a man for not having these. These are just, this is the RP in general, men trading notes, swapping notes, seeing what works for some guys and what doesn't work for some guys. So let's go, let's go around the horn. Uh, you want to go Thor or? Sure. I'll do that. Back? I won't go into the, to the seven skills of a dominant master and present, but if, if there is a priority, it is a man's primary agency. That's a problem solving. Problem solving is a man's primary agency. Without that, he, he he doesn't really have any. And there's a whole lot that goes with that. You know, most people's approach to problem solving is they see a problem, they offer, they, they start thinking solutions, solutions. It is a skill, a skill, a skill that has to be refined. It has to be acquired. And it's uh, it's typically when you have good problem solving skills, both emotionally, empirically, and you know physically, you guys talked about having your wrenches. That's a problem solving skill. That's a tool to aid in problem solving, right? Um, having a welder, <laughs> building things, those are all problem solving things. So I would say if I was to prioritize, you know, what would be my core competency it would be problem solving and then maybe better time management as a distant second, because that's, that's, that's precious for all of us, but for a man, problem solving. Yeah. Gotcha. What about you, Mike? What do you got? Oh, oh, I'm going in today. I'm going in. I'm, Go I'm channeling Glenn it. Lawrence right now, guys. Oh shit. Here we go. A lot of y'all <laughs> out here going straight from your mama's house to your girlfriend's house. And you don't know how to do the shit in between. All right. There's mm. this thing called home management. You got to know how to do your own laundry. You got to know how right. to cook your own food. You got to know how to fucking dust and vacuum. You got to know how to get do your amen. own shit. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, guys, learn how to do your own shit. You need to be on your own for like a good like five to eight years with no woman taking care of you. So you know how to do your shit and you know how to do it your way, the way you like it. So when your woman comes into your life, you show her the way you like it. Not the way mama did it for you, because now you got mama issues, and she's not going to be with a guy who, who's got mama issues and wants mama 2.0. No, mama 2.0 and a good damn woman are two different things, and you guys need to sort that out. I'm done. Wow, that's good. Uh, all the, Glenn right. Lawrence, the Glenn Lawrence impression, I mean. No. I'm going to channel my inner Mike Steele. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. So, um, Guys, you guys really need to know how to color coordinate your outfit, right? Like, like if, if, if your socks and your scarf does not match, you what are you doing? You're like so last season, and and if if you're wearing bright, loud colors, it doesn't allow the feng shui of the room to actually like fit. Okay, you're too loud in your clothing colors, and the house colors is dim, dull. You have to match. You have to match. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, you got to have nice fluffy pillows. If you don't have nice fluffy pillows, bitches are not going to want to suck dick. They're not going to get on their knees if they don't have nice fluffy pillows. That's why we have the fluffy pillows. I call bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, did I do a good job? You got to have a pillow because, yeah, you don't. Want okay, to a have pillow. Money. I'm sorry. I did my best. I tried my best. Okay. No, in all, in all seriousness, I think guys need to have the, um, the, it's a mindset of, it doesn't matter. It has to get done. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, when we're in the military, shit is going down. It doesn't matter what's happening right now. This has to get done. And you have to just get it done. You know, like, nobody cares enough to take, to take away your pain. And nobody can. So you just got to get it done. You know, at the end of the day, that's that's what matters. Just get it done. Yeah, but Glenn, you were in the Air Force. How often does shit actually go down? Listen, okay. No, they go down on each other in the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 
Yes. Last time I checked, we didn't know, have Mr. a Mr. member of the village people dress up like us. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of little because nobody wants to be like the air force that's why. yeah but the air force does wear hats with farts and darts on them <laughs> hey i liked the chair force uh we kill our people by our targets by pushing buttons <laughs> that is air force well, the navy though honest, let's be honest so like we're, yeah. we're not swashbuckling anymore <laughs> you guys the only thing that you're swashbuckling is your never mind i won't say that it's not really <laughs> Wash, I power the buckle, vessel buckle. that drops warheads with megatons from the sky with the accuracy of three freaking feet. Yeah, while well, you guys are swabbing dicks, I get it. Go on. <laughs> right. What about you, Paul? What do you got going on, or what, what are your thoughts? Core competencies for a, a man is uh, f- budgeting and paying your fucking bills on time. There you go. That's pretty good. That's yeah, a good one. Because you are you are a resource provider. Whether you like it or not, right? Even if it's just for yourself, I mean, do you want to be the guy that's yeah. like dodging creditors and shit? I I uh, I worked with this guy. Um, I used to work for a a pharmaceutical filter membrane plant after the Navy. I was that a rinse line erotic. operator. I was a I was a rinse line operator, and there was this guy there where they he had creditors calling the office all the time trying to get a hold of him because he had all these outstanding debts and bills and shit and he was just ducking calls all the time and i'm like bro pay your fucking bills dude like it's and i i I was uh i was like in my early 20s at the time i was like dude pay your fucking bills this guy was in his like i don't know 40s or something and he was ducking creditors i was like who how do you live your life like that where you you have like a a negative credit score and you, you can't just pay simple bills and stuff like that because you'd much, much rather go spend your money on partying and stuff like that than than taking care of what you need to take care of and then going out and doing that stuff and budgeting for that guy. god damn, don't even get me started on this because if you're gonna be broke, if you're gonna be broke and go out and party or be like some homeless surfer dude at least be debt free and broke what's it it's like so you know, happy? that katie perry you're song that you're really not broke though the, the Katy Perry song where she's like, shout out to all you guys that are paying for bottle service with your rent money. Like, fuck off, man. <laughs> if you're doing that, you are a loser. You are you are a loser trying to pretend to be a top G, dude. You're not. Pay your fucking bills. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Paul, I get it. I'll send you that invoice. All right. Thanks, man. Hey, I know you've been trying to call me for the last week. <laughs> and shit, you know, I, I was trying to be subtle. We all owe me money. money. That's the problem. Everyone <laughs> owes Paul money. He's he's uh, he's, he's trying to. And he's uh, just venting. <laughs> he's he's woman right now. Pay my money. Paul, who, who hurt you? <laughs> oh, everybody drink. Everybody, everybody drink. All right. Oh, now call me Paul. Hey, you're Paul, though, Paul. Paul. You're Paul. Paul. There it is. Everybody you're says. short and ugly. Oh, you're there old. It there it is. I'm old. You got that gray Come beard. Come on now. <laughs> hey, who said something about gray? I'm going to kick you in the dick. Don't you leave our grays alone. <laughs> hey, I'm going to have to talk to Paul about shaving my head here pretty soon. Or should I leave it patchy? What do you think, guys? No, no, no. Shave that shit, dude. Get a shaver. Oh, I'm going to get some guys no I mean, no I mean, hot. Hot. We're, we're, we're shaving it. We're shaving it. We're shaving it. Here. I want the full shine, you know. I want it to be blinding. So that's like, why I like skull shaver. It, it, it it's not a blinding shave. It's actually you know. Oh, is that the pit bull? Is that what you use? Yeah, I use the pit. Okay. here. I'll drop a link to the in the chat, guys, right. uh, for skull shaver. They are a uh, an affiliate. <laughs> oh yeah, send it to me. Yeah. The pit there you bowl? go. I dropped it in the chat. There might need a new one eventually. I, I, I like them, and they have a. a we're going off on a tangent here, but they have a subscription plan where they replace the blades every, you know, like 60 to 90 days, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's r- really affordable. It's the best electric shaver I've, I've found. Okay. I also have a Remington. It's not as good as the skull shaver. Yeah. Yeah. We got a super chat here, guys. Sound drop. <laughs> here we go. Oh. Rusty fuel with the one dollar ninety nine hose cost more than snap on dollars. I don't know what that means. I think maybe uh, snap on tools. Uh, snap on tools. <laughs> Wait a minute. You, 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 you have to sell your. Aren't first they kind of the same thing? Both of them. Wrench. Aren't they the same thing? They both snap on. <laughs> maybe I misinterpreted that. 
<laughs> or is nah, it just that? So for the audience that doesn't you know, say snap on or tools. strap on, that sounded really gay. <laughs> I guess they're both they snappers and snap on. The tools are tools. Yeah. And both shout out on. to our man in France, Bonjour Monsieur Chouk Le oh. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead, Nuke. What's uh, uh core, your core competency or tool? Um self education. You don't like after Ooh. you leave. God damn, nuke leave. hit us with a fucking nuclear bomb of yeah. four competencies. <laughs> like, like, yeah. come on, nuke. Why do you have to be that guy? <laughs> <laughs> just have the best I, idea ever. Fucking like, come on, just wrong though. I don't think he's wrong. I nuke, think go get a like, point shirt and just start call yourself Ryan now. <laughs> well, you got a well, gold star. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, what I'm saying is like, you know how the people complain We're like, well, in high school, they didn't teach me how to do taxes or how to balance a check. I'm like, dude, but you have the Library of Alexandria in your pocket. You have you know this. You have everything you could ever want or uh, known to man. And you can't figure out like how to live. Like if like if I need to replace a part on my car, I can go on YouTube and there's a step by step guide for the make and model and the year. You know, and if, if not, there's a forum somewhere. And if not, you can go ask somebody like self-education a lot of people struggle because they just want to eat easy answer right and also like um don't like manage the information you receive right if you go to the internet and you want to learn how to do something try to find people that care about that thing that you're doing don't go to people that have never done it and take uh info from them right understand that not everyone has a vested interest in educating you they want to they want to get you on their side, use propaganda to get you on your side, right? So if you get if you get caught up in propaganda from the government or anything, that's your own fault, right? You have you have to grow up as a man. You have to be able to have that intelligence to be like, hey, this is bullshit. They're trying to sell me something. Or, hey, this guy probably is the real deal, right? We all get tricked sometimes, but at the end of the day, self-education. If you don't know how to cook something, but you enjoy eating it, you got to teach yourself. And there's plenty of resources. There's no reason not to be able to do things. And this is like... This goes for men and women, right? If you're a woman today and you don't know how to cook, whose fault is that? It's your own fault because learning Mom to cook is so easy. Yeah, well, um, learning to cook is so easy. If you don't know how to change the lights out on your tire, or rotate your tires, or how to change a tire, which I've seen. I've walked in on men and women struggling to change a tire, and I had to help them through the whole thing. And I'm like, you know, this is dangerous. This, this thing could fall right on your foot if you don't know what you're doing. Why don't you look up a YouTube video for five minutes about how to change a tire? You know, self-education is very important. So, yeah. I want to ask Nick a question the about that. Pattern. Nick, I want to ask you a question about that, maybe the panel, just to get an idea. Because I think what you touched on, self-education as a discipline for every man, is so, so important and so overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, I, In my experience with all the consults I've done and things like that, it seems like the guys that don't read or listen to much, have a much more um, much more difficulty grasping the concepts of self discipline, and I was just curious because as a young man I was a huge reader, but in, in the traditional format I've shifted to audio recently. But part of mine is I always recommend these books or these things because taking action, reading, and self educating seems to be a really effective core competency with men there's so much out there when you touched on you have the library of alexandria at your fingertips even before the internet this was accessible uh you're probably too young but the proliferation of free libraries in america was huge when i was a kid we didn't even have the internet but i could i could get access to anything it was absolutely and they would encourage you and yeah they would I, encourage you they were like come to the library we literally have free movies and everything yes. you could ever need yeah yes yes like and 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 on top of that, I was encouraged to, to, to read. And so it became even fiction would inspire me. I mean, I know it inspires some of the great geniuses too. But whatever you think of Elon Musk, big fan of the, some of the older, really deep thinking uh, sci-fi stuff like Foundation and, uh, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for Humor, things like that. Just And they're, they're actually very, very deep thinking and educating disciplinary type of uh, stories. Um, anyway, wh what was your thoughts? Were you a big reader or how did you acquire this discipline and this core competency of, you know, self-improvement and learning things? I I'm curious about what the other guys too, because I think everybody here 
really takes this on themselves pretty effectively. Well, I was always like, I always wanted to understand the universe around me as a kid. I was a big science nerd as a kid. I love astrology or astronomy. Uh, like, I'm like, why is the sun in the sky? Like, what what keeps the universe together? What's gravity? What's this? I just had a lot of questions, and I always wanted to know how the universe worked. And then also as a kid too, I realized like, hey, when I play video games, I go at very long lengths to understand that the how to beat this video game as a kid when i was like playing sonic or super mario right as a kid i look up guides i practiced i i i'm like why don't i do that with other things right and it helped me as a kid realize that hey um at the end of the day no one's gonna teach you everything you gotta teach yourself your parents can only know so much your teachers don't really know that much anyway um, they can only teach you what they're specializing in, right? And they're not always going to teach you what you need. They're going to teach you what they think you need, right? So, and then I joined the military and be, being a nuke is a lot of self-taught, right? You got to go study stuff. Most of being a nuke, after you leave, uh, when you get to the ship, you got to self-teach everything. They'll, there are people that will teach you, but they don't have time. So you got to learn about this stuff yourself, right? So you got to be good at finding the right information in the right book. And sometimes... When you learn about this stuff, like when you don't know how to run a nuclear plant, they don't even care so much that you know the information. They want to know how you found it and where to find it. In case an emergency comes down, goes off or something bad happens, you know which book uh, in, in a volume of like 30 books to find that particular system and how it works and how to fix it or how to fix the situation. Right. Yeah. And that's what I tell guys like. The internet's very vast. The internet has plenty of information, right? If you spend enough, enough time on the internet, you'll find porn of every, of anything, right? Rule 34, the internet, you'll oh, there's always porn of something. Or if you spend enough time on the internet, you'll learn a lot of cool stuff, right? On YouTube is literally a video tutorial on literally anything you ever want to do. If you want to learn how to play piano, hey, most of my piano skills were from watching people on YouTube play piano, right? Um, and same thing with... Uh, with like women, like if you want to see how, how women work, look at guys in the field. I know that's maybe it's a little performative, right? But just seeing people interact in real time, not in movies, not in cartoons and stuff like that, like real time, how people work and how the world works and just paying attention. You're going to be so much far ahead because everyone wants the easy, simple answer. What's the fastest way to get muscle? There is no fastest way. Progressive overload, uh, protein. And get sleep. Trend. That's it. And trend balone. Trend. Yeah. Trend. yeah. And then trend. And then trend. trend, 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 trend baloney, guys. Yeah. The same. Well, Dr. Yeah, Trent, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Yeah, trend Lawrence. Yeah, he has, he has to I have never. I don't know what like Nuke is talking about. Like it's trend. It's, that's it. <laughs> so, so that's so all I got I, to say. I, I agree with that, Nuke. I, I think it's so underrated because when you start doing those things, even learning the smallest things is that foundational thing we talk about, which is taking action in any situation. As you take that action. I, I think it's underrated that when you study like that and you do that, you touched on a thing where you're actually changing reality around you because of the knowledge you're putting in your head and then taking action on it. Even if you don't think you're taking action on it, it's just one of those most amazing things that happens slowly over time. What are your guys' thoughts on it consuming this information, reading uh, the internet? I, I, I suspect all of you do this. This is a very core competency. I would say so. My, when I was a when I was a kid, my dad used to say, "Anything you want to know, you can you can find it in a book." And what I teach my kids is the same thing. Anything you want to know, you can find it in a book. Or I add on YouTube um, to that. <laughs> but when it comes to like let's say like red pill content, right, or or self help content of any kind, one problem I do see guys have is they get addicted to the self help content and they don't take action and they end up reading like you know, one book 10 to 15 times, you know, shout out to Corey Wayne, or they'll read, they'll read all the books and, but they don't put any of it into action. Well, if you don't take what you're learning from the, the material, whether it's YouTube podcasts, books, or whatever, if you don't take that information and, and apply it, it's just mental masturbation at that point. So the, the, the key there is what you're alluding to Thor, which was, taking in the information and then taking action on it. That's, that's the real uh, core competency that you have to do with this information. Yeah. The hammer doesn't swing itself. Does it Paul? No, it doesn't. No, <laughs> you got to get a girl to help you sw swing that. <laughs> you swing that hammer. You know what I mean? You know, hey, Nuke knows hey, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hey, Mike, what yeah, about dude. you? <laughs> or, I mean, um, AJ, what about you? I mean, 
your nuclear Navy too. You're no slouch. You. you know, the, the, right here's some self taught for you. This is the cam girdle for my car right now. Yep. Because I have an oil leak. That's actually like right in this area. It is off the car. I am not an auto mechanic. I have learned how to do this all on my own. So right yeah, on, you'll be surprised. Uh, you'll be you'll yeah. surprise yourself what you can do if you just look like you're 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 smarter than you think. It just the internet makes you stupid if you look at the wrong stuff. You got to look yeah. at the right no, stuff. It's the difference. Like, both like, my camshafts are sitting on a tire in my garage right now. The difference between like you know people that actually want to do something and people that don't want to do something is the people that want to do something will fail a million times trying to figure out the answer and find and look for the answer. And the people that don't want to do anything, they complain about not being taught or nobody helping them to do it. Like learning, like Nick was saying, take, are you going to take the initiative and be your own success? Are you going to lead yourself to success by taking the initiative or are you going to complain about all the odds that were against you and all the, you know, like that, cause that's easy. That is really easy. You know, like it's so easy to fall into a victim mentality and be like, well, my dad never taught me how to be a man. So that's why I, I just became the man that my mom taught me. And, and, you know, I rather complain about my dad not being there and, and telling you that's my problem rather than doing what I need to do to learn how to be a man. Or I don't know how to change the oil because my dad my dad left that when I was two years old. Okay, you could cry about it or you could do something about it. You know? Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good one for sure. One of these days we'll have to do an episode on ego protection because it's so it feels so good to be able to protect that ego and it's super easy, you know, to do it. And yet it doesn't really do much for you. Yeah, you're right on. And, and Glenn, I, did, were you a reader growing up? What did you do? Um, how did actually, you do your, your self help? Yeah, well, I mean, you Bible school. I, I did Bible Bible. School. Like, 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 that was probably the most I've ever read in my life. Yeah, during college. <laughs> um, well, I'll take that back. I have read a lot of scripts, but you know, but I was not a good reader growing up. And I remember, like, I got so tired. Like, you remember in class, the teacher would like, okay, you read this paragraph. And then you go down the line, right? I hated my time because I wasn't a good reader as a kid. And I got made fun of. And I was like, you know what? I remember spending one summer just, like, going to the library and reading and, like, listening to, like, the the, there were, like, those book clubs. And people were sitting there reading a book. I joined a book club. Okay. It was a, it was, it was about, like, it was a, one of those, um, what did you get? Like Matthew book. one month and then Luke the next month. And then no, 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 no. It was like a sci-fi book club, you know, and like, and we're like, you know, talking about, it was like a Star Trek or Star Wars. Yeah. It was the Star Wars ones, you know, yeah, all the books of the Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. So you're I didn't with know the there nerds. was damn chapters. Yeah. <laughs> I was like just yeah. reading all these things. And I was like, and it helped my reading and comprehension get yeah. better. You know, like bring back shame. Can we shame people again? They'll read again. <laughs> you know, it's read interesting. Read again. I will say this about reading. I struggled with it a lot. I felt like I had to practice 10 times harder than everybody else to get competency and speed. I think this is probably common for everybody. I used to have to use my inner voice when I would read. You guys do that where you look at it and you're speaking it to yourself. It took me years to get past that. And when I got past that, once I realized how to get past that, I would read blocks of letters at a time. I'd start to recognize my brain started recognizing them and I didn't have to use that voice it opened up an entire new universe. Just a thought. It's awfully, it it doesn't come easy to everybody. Sometimes some people have to work 10 times harder to absorb information. And that's unfortunate, but it just means you have to do it. The reward is 10 times greater. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's funny because we have all these, like we, we don't have an excuse anymore. Yeah. We really don't have an excuse anymore. There's no excuse. You suck it with women. You don't have an excuse. There's the information is out there and it's free. Yep. Like it's out there. If you are not good at anything, if you don't have the tools that you need to be successful, it's not because nobody gave them to you. Nobody taught you. It's because you chose not to acquire them. That's true. Yeah. I got you know, like, there's I, a, there's a, there's a, I think that's a tool that needs to be in their belt. Like, accountability to yourself like are you are you able to like look at yourself in the mirror and be honest with yourself and and say hey my shortcomings in this area is because you know what i didn't really pay i didn't take that serious 
yeah. instead of blaming somebody else. It's kind of like, uh, man, we had this we had this conversation in, in beer club, um, and I won't get into specifics, but someone was talking about how something they couldn't afford something, right? Like it, it's too exp- something's too expensive and stuff. And I was like, look, you you pay for what you value. You know, and so maybe this just isn't that important to you, but you're going to probably pay for video games, aren't you? You're going to probably buy the the latest and greatest video game. But if this was really important to you, maybe you would forego the video game and you would buy this. Right. You got to sometimes make choices. So, this, you know, with anything else, right? Like, uh, oh, they didn't teach me this. Well, you must have not valued it enough. (laughs) You know? Yeah. And before AJ moves on to the next tool, I also want to uh, add to the whole self-taught thing because Paul, you know this uh, probably better than anyone, is uh, I am entirely self-taught in my career. Oh. I <laughs> I went from uh, working unemployed, then I worked at a gas station, then I worked at a service desk, then I was a desktop guy, and now I'm a systems administrator. Mm-hmm. No college degree, no student loan debt. Mike, you forgot that um, that summer of stripping. Well, you were my biggest customer, and I thought that we were going to keep that to ourselves. <laughs> oh, I thought we were having an honest hour. My bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent self taught when it comes to like IT. I mean, I went to college, but I didn't learn anything about IT in college necessarily. And by the time I started taking classes on computers i was already working in the business um i did go i did one time oh, a company i worked for put me through a plus training so i went to a, an actual class to learn a plus stuff but it, it's one of those things where you don't really learn anything in those classes you know it, what you yeah. really learn is studying for the exam you know and so that was the only class I ever took for any of my certifications. All the rest, I I was I self studied for the certifications and just passed those. And then the rest was all on the job, and then like exactly. Google searching problems, right? Like learning how to troubleshoot. That the the skill of learning how to troubleshoot is something that guys even in the IT space don't fucking have, and it pisses me off. Yeah, yep. guys that like they they come to me and I'm like, how'd you get this job, dude? You can't even fucking like break down a, a simple problem and look at it. Okay, let's let's look at it. how should it work. Okay, what's not working? Like, what happens when we click this? You know, it's like it, I get yeah. pulled into things where it's an application or whatever that I've never fucking touched in my life, and I'll figure out how to fix it. You know, because like I've learned how to basic troubleshooting skills. And there's some guys that are like, oh, I don't, I don't even know how that program works. Dude, you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it's, it's so true. Like, how do you say that? Because like, I did the same thing with filmmaking. As an actor, mm-hmm. didn't need it. I, I went to, I went. <laughs> it's funny. I went to an acting like, um, like school, right? Like it's you know just like a regular one out here in LA. And um, I remember the instructor was like, "Why are you here? You did it great. Oh, you're, you don't need to be here." So then I was like, "All right." Then COVID happened. Right. And I was like, you know, I really want to get really good at this. I want to learn production. But there, you know what? COVID happened. Everything's locked down. I just went to YouTube. And then later on, I decided I'm, you know, was going to enroll at Full Sail University, which is a filmmaking school. So I wanted the I wanted the degree to get, you know, to give me more like credibility. Like, hey, he has a good de- a good de- a degree, right? And I remember sitting in the class and the instructor was like, Why are you here? You have more experience in the time that you've been in the industry than I do. I like you know more than I do in this field, like hands on because I've been in the field. I've worked as a PA, like a grunt, like the the lowest of the low, and I worked all the way up to a, like the first AD. You know, that's the first assistant director. You know, I have written the script. I have directed my own stuff. So it's like I did it all just trial and error. And mm-hmm. watching things, watching movies, seeing how seeing things in movies they're looking, and I just uh, you you learn what you want to learn. You don't need to go to a school to learn it. Education is not locked in a in a in a classroom. Education is no. everywhere. I have a whole chapter on it in my book. What, what like real education is? Yeah, you you self learn it. Going to co- so I did the, I had the same thing, Glenn. Where I was already working in the IT industry when I was working on my my degrees in network security, and I I was one of those guys in the class where I I knew everything in the class. I didn't need to be there, but I wanted that piece of paper. Like I wanted the thing on the wall for the resume fodder and shit yeah. like that. You know, yeah. That's all it ended up being. All, everything I learned was was on the job. 
Do you like have your like paper degrees like anywhere? I lost mine. Yeah, I got them up on my wall. Oh, see, mine I didn't really care enough about because I lost them both. I'm like, oh, well, Uh, you know, the the one degree that I, you know, I'm proud of is my PhD, you know, Piper Down. No, my Pippin Hose degree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, he's he's, he's got an advanced double degree in shit talking. So (laughs) (laughs) let's uh, let's be sure we shout out one of our uh, favorite moderators here. Yeah, welcome, Pearl. Hello, Pearl. Let's go. Pearl's a rabble. Pearl's in the house. Rabble rousing Pearl. (laughs) (laughs) Bless her heart. Let me tell you real fast. Bless hey, her heart. Yeah. <laughs> low, key, low key, Pearl has some jokes, you guys. Pearl got jokes. Yeah. Like you think she tells you all the best jokes on on live or when she's on her camera. No, she got some jokes. She I got some it. good jokes. Gotcha, gotcha. So what's our next tool, AJ? I was gonna ask you guys about uh tools that you think you should have around the house in general. Let's do it. Uh, like literal tools. Like literal Ooh. tools. Okay. Yeah, which I kind of alluded to earlier. Oh, oh like look, look who fucking woke hey. up. Hey. 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 Bracing us with your presence. Before I go into that, uh, right. Uh, all right. Um, here's a tool, AJ, that, that people should have. Um, some people should have the tool called a brush. And brush their hair before they come on cam. Dude, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my hair. I gotta get a haircut. It's you know getting what? worse. They should have involved. a fucking watch to know what time. And the bald it is. guy has a brush. This doesn't make sense. Welcome, son. I learned. <laughs> you know, I learned. And you know the last one. I learned. Wear a hat. Take it. Uds, you should yeah. just wear a hat. People won't ask questions if you wear a hat. See, look, see, yeah. that's. <laughs> that's literally. So right I, before I came on live, there we go. I hopped in the shower. Yeah. And What's going on, guys? Hair. <laughs> Welcome, Huds. Welcome, Huds. Uh, before we go into the next part about talking about tools, let's uh, ask Huds about what he thinks some core competencies men should have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, one of the ones right now, the reason why I'm late is being able to deal with uh, anything when it pops up. So I had a bit of an emergency I had to deal with with uh, my editing company this morning um, and being able to navigate that and rearrange the ship and then send it back on its right path. That is something you need you need to be uh need to be aware of. And then also one of the things we had talked about before is uh having these guys. Making sure you defend your home. Oh, he's gonna pull it out. Ooh, yeah. Oh wow. Oh, he's <laughs> oh, you like nice. that? He's staying strapped. Yeah, it's a beautiful or he's you know I mean? I mean, he's in Philly. <laughs> Have you watched the documentaries on Philly and its drug epidemic? It's like if you're not strapped in Philly, you're fucking dumb. Exactly. Yeah. No, like that that was one of the things when I moved here. Like literally, if you go across the street, it is a mess. Like there is just nonstop crime. Um, so I'm I live like right on the cusp of one of the really bad neighborhoods. And uh that was one of the first things I did was when I moved here. It's I got um you know, I got my concealed carry and I uh, got a car gun, and yeah, um, I actually feel safe now. And you know, God forbid I ever have to use anything, but it's uh, yeah, it's a dangerous area. But well, yeah. Huds, there's having the tool, and then there's getting the version that makes you look like. Is Scarface, what's up with well, that? Well, that's my that's my for fun one. That's not it's not <laughs> it's it's my fun. Fun. It's airs hop. Come on. I just shoot pumpkins <laughs> with that. I shoot pumpkins and fruit with that. No big deal. I don't I don't like run down people who are trying to get on my block with that. Glenn, your mic is fucked. Was it uh is it the 50 oh, huts, AE or huts. the 44, buddy? What was that? 50 AE or 44. Yep, yep is the 50 oh, AE. Yeah. He, got, he got the real deal. My my hey, huts, is that the AE. um did you have that out? Remember when we had that one? When we did that one episode of Breaking News, and you had that stranger in your house. <laughs> you know the one. You know the yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Did you have that out, like, hey man, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I did actually because I had only just like met him, so I did long kind story of short. Th- uh, Huds had some random black guy that he'd never even met in a day in his life in his house while we're filming, and <laughs> we filmed the episode of Breaking News with him. <laughs> when you are the best dating coach in Philly, <laughs> that's true. Best gay dating coach. <laughs> best gay dating coach. Um, I would say a, a really good tool to have. Well, what are we? Are we? Are we doing the tools? Yeah, AJ, like where are we at? We're, we're tool. into the tools. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, was I think... give a shout out real fast to uh, Elliot and uh, Jason in the chat with uh, Raduku and uh, Jason L. 
both good guys. Met him through uh, MLD. So Dragons. Shout out to them. Raduco's the shit. He's a he's a Dracar. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, I'll say a tool that you guys need to have is um, you know, you need to have your hammer. Your Thor's hammer. That's right. You need to have that hammer. You know it's the one I'm talking about, Thor. You know the one. Mm. Um, and you have to be able to break down walls sometimes. And you have to be able to know how to wield this hammer. This hammer has to be like, you have to be one with the hammer. It has to be like attached to you, literally, um, in order to be a real hammer. Um, but no, in all seriousness, I think every guy should have um, an electric uh, uh, electrical kit. Like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if your electricity goes out or you need to be able to, to wire something, you should know how to do basic like home remedy stuff. And one thing that seems to be real hard, I always see people like ask people for is help with electrical work, you know, like little things. And I think that's probably one of the most important things that guys should learn how to do. And we live in a very digital and technological, everything's ran through electricity now. So basic electronic tools and and electronic skills is critical in today's day and age. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. How, how do you how I, do you go food about food learning that though? Um, YouTube, YouTube, or you know, you talk to Thor. One of the two. They're like, I would talk to Thor. He's better than YouTube, but you know, I got a lot of tools. <laughs> yeah, Thor, yeah, we know. Nuke myself. We're all electrical trained. <laughs> uh, we got a super chat from Offy Kingdom yeah, in the Offie building. Kingdom. Shout Offie out, Offie. brother. I love the books. My brother Offy, miss you, pal. Chat soon. Hey, Afi, I need you to give me a call, man, ASAP. Afi is the World Manosphere Book Champion. That's true. Oh, yes, he is. This it's is like very true. Two weeks, a new one. I love it. <laughs> and I think, he, I think he broke the Guinness World, World Records of book writing. Yeah. And you know what? His books are good. I got some sitting right here. What's it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's an interview with a soul. I think that's the title of the book. That one's that's really good. One. It's that's written good. way good. differently than his other books. Yep. So guys, I can't, wait, I, I can't you wait, wait for a script to come out. Hmm? Back to tools we should all have. I was given the philosophy early on, you, you guys will know about tools. Tools are pretty much anything, especially you military guys. You ever hear the term, one is none, two is one? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, exactly. so with that, exactly. And there are very good reasons to use that philosophy, not across tools, but across everything you, you need essentially gives you a backup plan to the initial plan. It even applies to relationships too. Basic tools. Everybody should have a set of basic tools. And when I say tools, enough tools to work around the house. That's for sure. And then you need to expand from there. I mean, your basic tools right now is going to be essentially today, you're going to have a phone. You're going to need YouTube. You're going to start to want to look at do-it-yourself things. You know, a basic toolkit with wrenches, screwdrivers, hammers, knives all of those things are really important to have for day-to-day use we talk about the defense side of things that's that's another tool and you can't get these all at once you know you need to methodically plan for the tool sets you need you know and it depends on your circumstances you know and uh you you can have basic tools everywhere uh i prefer you know having a lot of tools to do a lot of things, including drilling your own 300 foot water well, but that's just me. I like, and and you don't have to learn it all from YouTube. I learned how to do that from a book. I wish I would have had YouTube to be honest, but um, definitely a good tool set. We all talked about that. I think that AJ talked about having a good wrench set, good socket set, some screwdrivers, you know, those little electric drivers drills, Having that with a set of drills to make holes, even for the ladies, if you need to make a hole, is super important. You know, understanding a little bit about mechanics of your car is important. You don't have to change your tires. You don't have to do that stuff. But understanding what that's all about is probably an important thing to do. And if you have daughters, it's really important that you at least give them a base understanding of how these things work so they can stay somewhat educated about the physics around the house and their lives. So that's kind of it. Just basic stuff. Gotcha. Go ahead, Mike. What do you got? Uh, I, I, the two biggest ones, guys. All right. The first one is one, and you only need one. One good chef's knife. One, <laughs> because you, 
it, in a pinch, you can use that knife for everything. So you can you can cut, you can fillet fish with it. You can cut meat, cut vegetables, fruits. You can do all of that, and you take good care of it, and you can defend yourself with it. Yeah. So maybe maybe you don't have your uh, your 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 Scarface golden pew pew yet. But well, why you, don't you though, Mike? I mean, this yeah, is America. Your, your last. I know, year. honestly, huh? There's well, really no excuse. This is maybe America. maybe I want to train in hand to hand knife fighting first. Uh, <laughs> guns are more effective. Uh, they are. <laughs> have you ever heard the saying? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Yeah. But maybe, but guns are more expensive. Maybe you're just starting out and you can't afford a gun yet, but you can afford a chef's knife. Also, guys, a Ruger. get a Ruger, man. You can afford that. Yeah, you know? I was gonna say a good chef's knife costs more than a high point. <laughs> you know what? I'll make a compromise. Have you guys ever heard of the M48 tactical hammer? <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually, yeah, sure. I know exactly yes. what you're talking this is about. This Thor's hammer, modernized guys. This can be used in a toolkit, and it is a tool. And yeah. It's one of those deadly weapons. I think it's a uh, United United Cutlery makes a whole line of M48, you know, Marine. products, tac tactical fucking tomahawks and shit. Yeah. yeah aside from that, because that's a blade, people look at it. You'll be funny. This is a hammer that could be used in any of those circumstances. It would be absolutely devastating in all circumstances. And you could drive a nail with it. Just let you know. Mm -hmm. And and the guys, the second thing, a rooter. Okay. You take a massive shit, you clog the <laughs> toilet. Okay, yeah. you get you get that in there. You rooter that shit out. There, your toilet's fixed. Oh, disposal's yeah. clogged. Get the rooter yeah. in there. Disposal's unclogged. The little vent that comes out of me. your dryer with all the with all that fluff uh, stuck in there, and you don't want it to catch on fire. Take the rooter. Go in there. Get it all out. A rooter oh. will save you thousands of dollars That's in home so repair. I mean, have you ever seen a woman when she backs the toilet up and can't? Oh, they're so embarrassed. How did they know that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Girl just knocked on my door the other day because she needed a plunger. And I was like, there what happened? Is. She's like, oh, sorry. What kind yeah, of plunger? That looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. There you well, go. A regular there's, one, your, regular guys, there's your tactical war hammer. Let me now, tell you guys a story. My dad was a plumber for the city of L.A. Oh, God. Right? And every once in a while, he would have to go to, like, offices. And, like, you know, where they have, like, the executive suite bathrooms and stuff like that? This one lady's office, my dad had to go. She worked for the city. She had to go in there and, um, you know, see what's wrong with her plumbing. She said she kept on complaining that there's plumbing problems. He snaked that shit out, and there was nothing but condoms in there. Like, she was, like, <laughs> flushing all these. And he's like, well, you know, um, I think I figured out your problem. You fuck too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what does your dad do now? Because they're just shitting on the streets in L.A. Yeah, he retired. That's why. Oh, yeah, okay. that's yeah, that's why they're doing it. Ah, no, <laughs> my dad's retired now. You know, but um, I, we forgot one is important tool. You guys, you know the the tool that like you know folds the clothes and then like cleans ah. it and then like you know, <laughs> like makes. Oh, but those clear. are expensive though. Yeah, I was gonna, have, I was yeah, there's a monthly those subscription. Are expensive. Like those I'm just saying, it's a tool. <laughs> it is a tool. Are you guys talking about my like? AI dishwasher? Yes. <laughs> no, uh, no, but kind of. You know yeah. what? You know what? One tool that you, none of you guys have mentioned yet. Let's see here. Bring it up. That's, yeah, you know what? That's the most basic. Touch. We all yeah. overlook it. The most basic every man needs every day. I never, I, I never go anywhere without this. And, and, and I will actually spend money to um, to check my luggage so I can have a, my pocket knives with me yes, no matter where I fucking travel because. You never know when you need it. I always I also have uh, one of these knives too. Um, oh, I got one too. Yeah. These are yeah. these also, but but at the at a basic level, you know the so the, the 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 standard MacGyver fucking Swiss Army knife. Yep. Uh, no guy should go leave home without it. Man, that is a big one, Paul. I was given one by my father. It's and the grandfather. We all had those, and mm -hmm. still do to this day. I think I have a Gerber somewhere. It's close, but yeah, yeah that's a big deal. Yeah, and I always get the I always buy the tinker, right? Because there's always there's a Phillips head screwdriver on it. There's a can opener. There's also the can opener also doubles as uh, a flathead screwdriver. You know, like there's just all sorts of things that I use these for on a daily basis. Or, you know, yep. I think the girls should have one in their purse too. It may not need to be yep. that big, but it's. I so make them pink for you yep. ladies. <laughs> yeah. You mean for huds? Uh huh. And and huds. Rainbow. Mine is pink. How did you guys yeah, know? 
I thought it was rainbow. Well, you know, <laughs> the lettering, the, the lettering the back. in the back. The sign gave it away. Yeah, yeah there we there go. There you go. Bring that <laughs> energy to the table. <laughs> there you go. That's Guy beautiful. With a save around. Now, like, here's a question for you guys. Now, we know oh, there are all these tools out there, right? Um, and some of these <laughs> tools are costly, right? You know, some some tools are they run a little expensive, right? Yeah. Um, what? Like so that that like that hammer knife that was like what fifty bucks fifty nine bucks yeah okay yeah. so like some of these tools that we see that we know they're expensive like Thor I know your like your garage you have tons of tools I know because I played with them but like that's that's hey. the, that's an expensive oh. like, <laughs> playing with well, Thor you guys saw not that play with them too not, not not that tool I don't know what you're talking about that's gay that's HUD <laughs> no um but like uh. Some of these tools are expensive. So is there, is there like, do you guys like, let's give them a tool here, how to shop or how to acquire tools, you know, certain tools that you may need. And, and if you need to be on a budget or economically, you know, like what do you guys uh, look for in specific tools like that determines whether or not they're of good value, even if they're not a name brand? Yeah. I'd say uh, a price single point piece wise. of metal. Yeah. yeah. Like um, if a hammer is one single piece of metal all the way from head to handle, that's a good indicator. I I would say to um look like Amazon is yep. a great place to get tools because there's customer reviews. Yep. Um also know the what you're gonna use them for, right? If you're just if you're if you're not gonna break up your driveway, you don't need a jackhammer, right? If you're just trying to Use a hammer to break up s small pieces of cement or something. You don't need a whole jackhammer. Like, make sure you have the right tool for the, the right size tool for the right job. Um, and realize too that there's a lot of tools that you'll be kind of surprised of how cheap they are. Like, for example, uh, gloves, like stuff like this. These are, you can use them for anything for when you do yard work, for when you're working on your car, for when you're lifting heavy stuff. You know, a lot of people say, like, no, that's that's not manly to use gloves, but like once you stub your hand or something. You're done. You can't do anything. Like I got shit to do. I, so these are like ten bucks, yeah, right? And these, unmanly. like, you can drop a bowling ball in your hand and you won't barely feel it. So, yeah. you know, just um, like these drill sets are also pretty, or these bit sets mm. are pretty cheap yeah. too. Uh, this is Dewalt. This is a name brand. So it's like, you know, what's gonna run you the most are like uh, drills, like these. The yeah, walkers, you, DeWalt yeah. Tools, yeah. Milwaukee. This is a yeah. This is a Dewalt. Oh, that's and good. also. Also, surprisingly, yeah. uh, the batteries are expensive for these guys. Like yep. this little yeah. thing is like 60 bucks. This little little battery, 60 bucks. So I would say look for reviews on Amazon for like the best tools. Know what you, know what jobs you're gonna do with that tool, and also take care of your tools so you don't have to keep replacing them. Because I have a, a yeah. cool yeah. flashlight that I, that goes with this, and it's like my favorite tool because it's like it's magnetic and it sticks on stuff. But I lose it every three months, and that's sixty bucks that I have to pay for. No, like no. Do I you guys like look for multiple, like multi tools, like tools that could do multiple jobs? Oh, like a ten in one. That that uh, can't like stop. a ten in one, but like that, that has like, risk. Uh, like 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 okay, like like I, I love Dewalt because like one thing with Dewalt, all the batteries could swap out for other, you know, for the same like other tools. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, um, thing, like Mo Milwaukee and Ryobi like, do the same. Yeah, thing. like Milwaukee and Ryobi, Ryobi the same thing. Um. But like I have like a screwdriver, like it's a you know just a screwdriver that switches out to a socket wrench as well. You know, I didn't just buy a socket wrench and then a screwdriver. I bought one that has like multi use. You know, like because it's functional. Yeah, yeah I, I think like, that's uh, the when most... you go to like Home Depot or Lowe's and you're just buying one socket. Say it's like thirteen bucks for that one socket. When you can buy a kit ratchet kit with that socket for like 22 bucks buy that instead because yeah. you can never have enough like i said earlier in the beginning of the show you can never have you lose that shit you're your done ratchet. yeah you're frustrated for the rest of the day yeah but but here but here's the thing that i have experienced firsthand if you're working on like small electronics and little things around the house then yeah the screwdriver with the interchangeable heads that's okay if you're that's working on a car on an engine no, you want the big fuck off screwdrivers so that head doesn't come off and fall down in your engine. You yeah. want the single yeah. piece of uh, of steel that's not a bunch of little parts that's going to fall apart and break. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, figure out what tools you like the most. They're just tools that you always defer to and stuff like that. Like like this set has little small flat flathead. 
uh, little flatheads, but I never, I don't want to dig when I'm working on my computer or something small or, or something through like to find the right size. So I just say, oh, I'm just going to grab my tweaker. And if you're wearing certain type of work clothes, you could just put the tweaker right here while you're working, have a flashlight work and then whoop, pull the tweaker out. And then, yeah, yeah. it's like, it keeps flow, your flow state and working on stuff better. So it's like, also think about accessibility with your tools. Like, is it something that I have to like dig through my box or I have to put together and all that stuff? Or is it something I could just pull it, tighten, pull it back and go. So, yeah. you know, I would say a tool that I, let me, let me, let me throw one up. Oh yeah. This is a, this is a good one guys. Cause I have a story. <laughs> Chuck the painter. Oh. Fun story that's extremely common for 10, it looks like 10 euros, brother. Hey, my Viking brother, fun story. My dad always buys new tools constantly because he loses his previous ones in his workshop and ends up finding them again months later. Always has a collection three times the same thing. So I watch this with my father too. I mostly have this issue with parts. Parts for the well, parts for the pumps, things like that. I buy a spare, and then I forget I have it. So then I go and buy another one <laughs> when I need it. <laughs> so I, I've actually worked a way around it. When I buy a tool, I always have a, save the old one or keep a backup or refurbish it. And I, I make a cabinet where all the secondary stuff is. That way, if for some reason I misplace one, which is typically not what happens. It's usually a cleaner or somebody moves something and I don't remember where it's at and I want it right now. I just go to the backup. Uh, that's where that one is none and two is one comes in. It's a little bit of an organization thing, but I really, really am touched by that because my dad would lose his, his stuff too. And then for me, it would be like spare parts, a spare uh, uh, swamp cooler belt, things like that. I would have it and then forget that I actually bought it. Uh, and and I wouldn't have it, and uh, but I actually did. So I ended up with three or four belts <laughs> after about six years. So that's not uncommon. People do that. So it's just organizational skills. Yeah, yeah. have a place for them, and whenever you're done with your project, put them back in their that. place. And going with a nuke, having like the right size tool for the job. Like case in point, my house. I live in a, a third of an acre corner lot. Uh, push mower is almost unbearable in this Texas heat. But a riding lawnmower would be way too much, so I have one of those self-propelled push mowers mm. to cut it down. Yeah. Yeah, I got the Manscaped mower, too, you know. It helps cut everything down. Yeah, um, that one. You got to trim the uh, hedge to make the tree look yeah. better. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Also, um, also, don't be afraid to use PPE, you know. Like, you don't have, like, yes. use your PPE. Like, if you're going to if you're gonna work on your car, use the gloves. Imagine you're, like, you're – have you guys had this happen where you're, like – uh, wrenching and all of a sudden oh, it comes loose and you just hit your hand on, on another piece of metal. You're you slice it right open, dude. That's, that's oh, yeah, yeah. you got you bust your right knuckles. Now. My hands are yeah. all, my yeah. hands are all <laughs> up right now. Tell, tell us, I what just this did means, dude. Tell, I mean, we got an audience here of, of a lot oh. of folks, the young uh, folks. Dude. What personal, is PPE? personal protective equipment. This could range from anything from gloves, uh, helmets, condoms, anything to protect yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously, condom, yeah. condoms count as a PPE. Condoms are PPE, yeah. yeah. Uh, Earplugs, yeah. I mean, if we go to the range, yeah, earplugs. Ears, eyes and ears on, right? Yeah. yeah. It was a, and, there's an and, on my way home, I stole a rain jacket from work or a rain suit from work because it was thunderstorming and I'm on the motorcycle, so there's my PPE to keep me dry and comfortable while I ride 44 miles I back home. I love yeah. a 3A vest. Yep. And, oh, you guys know what's a lifesaver, guys, are those thermal gloves that uh, you can touch hot things with. Put those Ooh, in your car. Yeah. So if you break down on the side of the road, like, oh, uh, you got to work on the radiator or something on the side of the road, the engine is hot. You put these gloves on, you can touch the engine for like 15 old seconds before you feel anything. Yeah. Part, that's where your mom's of... cooking mittens went, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you got to be. And you got to have tools for like the weather too, right? Like you need to have something to shovel, like a shovel with or mm -hmm. something. Um, because, oh like, my in God. Texas, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, you live in the Northeast, so you know. Yeah, I'm just that. like thinking about that. There's been like one or two times where I didn't have like a, a, a scraper or something to uh, to clean off the car. And it is just a mess doing it with your hands. Oh, when yeah, you're getting ready for work. Like, oh, my that God. That sucks, man. I, I grew up in Vermont, so I know all about that. I don't miss it. Yeah, get that. Here's a tool that, that guys need to have. 
that we haven't hit yet. Now, we all cannot necessarily be as great as like Thor and have a gym in his own house. But every man should have a pair of 35 pound dumbbells. Ah, I do have 35 pounds, huh? It's read my mind. 25 <laughs> are too light. 35s will give you just enough resistance. Walk, yeah. Allows, yeah. And you could do so many different exercises with just a pair of 35 pound dumbbells. You don't, you can, you have no excuse to say like, oh, I can't go to the gym because it's too far or I had work late or, you know, I don't have any gyms. I don't have any equipment. In my house. You could get a 35 pound pair of dumbbells and you could literally do almost a work, a muscle. You can hit every muscle group with yep. those, with just a pair of 35 pound dumbbells. And the bands too. AJ just put up the yep. bands, you know, yep. if, you, if you go to the YouTube, there's some YouTube on RP Thor about those bands and they are like 24 bucks. It'll last you about 18 months, yeah. and, and it works, too. Uh, if you really want to spend some money, you guys hear of Power Blocks when you're speaking? Yeah, about yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Dang, man. You can get 55 pounds of those, nice. and you've got adjustable dent from 5 to 55 forever. Well, you've seen it. Yep. In the gym. Mm -hmm. you know? door, yep. door jam pull-up bar. Oh, oh yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Man. I have I have one of those, too. Yeah. Yep. And you could use that as a clothing rack as well. Yeah. Hey, be, be careful <laughs> of those, because uh, my friend Randall... And yes, fellow dragon. He yes. was using one of those pull-up bars and resistance bands, and came down hard on a chair. Yes, nasty. Yes. Well, you uh, uh, you do have to be careful. Like, so when I when I was uh just getting out of my divorce, I was overweight, and um, I was like, I think I was like two hundred thirty pounds when I decided to start losing all my weight, and uh, I ended up looking for a door jam pull-up bar and looking at the weight limits on them, and most of the the cheap ones you it, they have a pretty low um max weight and so i ended up getting like the the perfect pull-up fucking door jam pull-up bar because it, it had uh, the most uh weight capacity which was 220 pounds i had to lose 10 pounds before i was even able to use that <laughs> hit <thing>. the rating <laughs> yeah it was it was bad but uh oh, no. yeah. hey how about this aj how about guys in the chat you want to start adding some tools that are your favorites See a lot of folks in the chat. Feel free. We'll mention them at least yeah, for a I might, while. What I might think? buy them too. Yeah, I might buy them too. Hell, man. I Do you want to talk about your favorite tool? What, you know. what is this? Are you going to bring up flashlights again or something? I, I didn't say it. You said it. You man, said it. Man, you went really hot on your mic. <clears throat> oh, God. all right. I, oh, we can talk about uh, tools in the bedroom. Oh, I have another bedroom. tools in the bedroom works too. I, I have I have some uh, suggestions. Paracord. You know, um, just uh, just an old fashioned uh, necktie, a, a, a good old good old necktie works really great in the bedroom. <laughs> um, do you know those things that uh, like they're like a cylinder that you put them behind your headboard and they absorb the impact of like mm. you know if you're oh. headboard. Oh, I have, dude, I have those. I, I don't worry bedroom. about that. Cause I live by myself in my own house. So they're like twenty I bucks, fifteen sound. bucks on it. Yeah. Uh, um, so you don't want your headboard slamming uh, against mm -hmm. your um. Your wall, especially if you live in an apartment and stuff like that, those will absorb the shock and keep the bed more stable too. So, yeah. But what if we I like that? Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Hey. <laughs> vlogger. Vlogger. Yeah. Vlogger handy. And um, on, underneath your bed, they have these straps that could go underneath your bed and go up to the corners of the bed. Those are good for um, stretching. Yeah. Does that go with the tripod? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guys, um, get yourself a bed go, frame. GoPro. With, Buy a GoPro. With, with drawers underneath it. So then you're lying in yeah. bed. You just reach down, open the drawer, reach in, boom, ready. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, handcuffs. You're going to get handcuffs, get an extra set of keys and have yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> have them within arm's reach, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have a, a, a secret place in case you, you meet a crazy chick that, that locks you up in headphones or head, handcuffs and uh, you, you can't escape. So And then she starts arguing with you. Oh like what God. was it that that episode? Of, trick ones. That episode of Seinfeld when uh, George Costanza gets gets locked up and the chick like leaves him and he's stuck yeah. there the, all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And you're naked and just you're just like, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> and and again, shout out to Jason, you dog. I know, I know exactly where your strap kit and restraint kit is. <laughs> oh, so um, you forgot to bring a, a very great important brand. tool kit that you have. 
great brand. Your uh, bang bag. Ah, yeah. We'll save that for the paywall, but a good bang bag <laughs> is very, very useful. <laughs> save that for the thing. Um, um, uh, lighting. You have, you have an extra fridge, and I wanted. I want to talk about this. Yeah. You. Oh yes. Food. I think it's prepped, actually a freezer. Oh, freezer. Yeah. He preps like he has like meals for like a, like at least a year in there. No. You can, you can, okay, it's not that oh, full. It's like I mean, I have eaten mo- food that he has made two months prior, and it tastes just like it's freshly cooked that day. And he has this extra storage, like for food freezer, where you could prep your meals. I mean, it's just smart. He's just smart with it. Like he has it all organized. It's all labeled. It's just if you have the space, prep your food. And you want to be meal prepping. Prep it, store it, put it in the freezer, and it's there. It's good to go. Oh, dude, that just brought me up to having like an Instant Pot or a Crock Pot. I love yeah, there you go. my Crock Pot. Crock Pots, oh, yeah, I fucking hate Instant Pots. I just, <laughs> I'm not I a have fan. One. Of I think I've used it twice. I use my Crock Pot like at least two, three times a week. Yeah. I, I, I have one because some chick bought me one for Christmas, but I've I, I've only used it like twice. I, I much prefer to use uh, my Crock Pot. It's just easier. Yeah. Less and, complicated. and people meme on it all the time but guys that little chopper it's like a cylinder with the blades and you go oh, totally yeah, use like it that. totally use that yeah so <laughs> fast so easy yep. garlic onions tomatoes I use that for all my preps um do you guys have any tools for cleaning stuff yeah i have yeah, a I, girlfriend I, I have a, and um and then i hire a maid <laughs> i have a, a, a wife <laughs> girlfriend um yeah my i thought about girlfriend. real cleaning like cleaning the route out of your driveway like and stuff like that yeah yeah and, you got that what you're supposed to do no <laughs> damn do you got them on lock <laughs> i got videos. Well, i was just wondering i thought i thought they come that way they don't <laughs> no but i think i think that's super important like so i bought a pretty expensive uh vacuum i think it was like maybe like 200 250 dollars back in like 2017 and that thing is a beast and it goes with me everywhere that that i go um so it's worth investing in some of those cleaning supplies because they're not going to break down and you're going to have them forever yep. and you have to clean like let's dyson, be honest dyson. i got a dyson yep yeah i think one of the best vacuum cleaners i've ever owned or well, my parents owned it was one of those uh kirby's or rainbows yeah the guys would know oh those the ones. solid steel oh and... man you stub your toe I... on it you're you're done you got a broken toe but that thing will suck the <laughs> dirt from the ground underneath your floor I still oh, have one. It's like a capability. I, I gotta look into that. One. So they, I got two, I got die. two super secret tools that every man needs. Oh, here we Anybody? go. Black and Decker makes this little scrub brush that's powered by six AA batteries that will scrub the paint off anything. It's little. It's tiny. You set it by your sink. Cleaning becomes no problem if you're by yourself scraping something. It's to clean everything. There, that's a sign. Yeah. Uh, um, um, that that is one hell of a tool right there. So, oh, I got another one too. I'll think of it in a minute. <laughs> There's another super secret tool for cleaning. I could tell you guys. Yeah. Uh, you guys use a, 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 a. You guys use a steamer. I have a steamer that it doubles as a clothing steamer. It I, I use it to like disinfect stuff in my house. Yeah. Like if I need to thaw stuff out really fast, like in the freezer, if things are stuck. I use it on my toilet. Like, you know, you don't want to, sometimes you just don't want to touch the toilet with your hand. You just steam it. It get it's this, it gets pretty gross because you see all the stuff stuck in between the crevices on your toilet and it, and it, you know, takes care of all of that. <laughs> it's good for your car too. If you're, if you're trying to steam clean your car yeah, nice. and all that. A good one, also a good uh, brand for that is a uh, McCulloch. Get like the MC 1375 yeah. on Amazon. It's a good steamer. Oh, also a spa remover, right? If especially if you if your car you want to keep your car clean, you, you know you, the, the ones that you put like a certain clean uh, liquid in, and you just p- put it over a stain and it lifts the stain. You don't have to pay two hundred dollars for someone to come um, That's, lift it from your carpet. That. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have a, if you have a good if you have a good uh, vacuum. sorry AJ I, that's AJ's business. <laughs> sorry. Ah. That's, my, that's my that's my jam, dude. Yeah. Didn't we all sorry, though, what were you saying? Oh, I definitely have a steamer too, but I just remembered, guys. I mean, every one of us has to do personal grooming. We talked about it earlier, you knowing mm. and all that sort of thing. Uh, I ran into something eight years ago that is a tool 
uh, it's going to it's going to cause you to get belly laughs and have a whole bunch of fun with it. But uh, I saw this interview with George Clooney and he had used something called a Floby for over 25 years. And he was rated the world's sexiest man by using this thing for haircutting called a Floby. And of course, you know, I was going to the barber. I was spending the money doing the whole social thing. And then uh, uh, when when the wife got she, the wife's a cosmetologist, so she would also cut my hair and do all that stuff. But when she got hurt, she couldn't do it anymore, and it was real expensive to go to the barber. I started looking at this Floby, and I was shocked at how much these damn things cost. They were, like, made in the, what, 80s? And there was this big thing about this vacuum attachment that would suck your hair out and cut it. It yeah, sounds absolutely roll. ridiculous. Yo, throw ridiculous. up a photo of this thing. It's it so does. freaking ridiculous. <laughs> and I said, well, you know what? They're charging these things new like over $400 and used ones can go, you know, anywhere underneath the prices are insane. And if I, I looked up Amazon, the uh, results and people's comments, I was shocked at how many people were using this thing. So I, I bit the bullet and I bought it and I was shocked at how good the damn thing does for just your basic haircut. Of course, you got to get guides around the edge, but I was shocked at that. That George Clooney was dead right, and he'd used it for 30 years. And if you look at any of the commercials around Floby, I think Saturday Night Live did some skits on it. It just destroyed their credibility uh, as a device, but it's really quite brilliant. It sucks your hair out like a, a, a barber would, and then there's these little blades that cut it off on the guide so you can never make a mistake. It's shockingly good tool to Dude. save you money in the long run. Looking at that photo is giving me freaking wow. PTSD flashbacks to boot camp. Isn't that strange? <laughs> oh, that's what they hair. used to shave our heads at boot camp, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't it, it looks like it they shaved our heads with Yeah, because they got to do like a thousand men a day. Yeah, so it's kind of the private version of it. Well, they, well, the in the Navy they had uh, they had vacuums attached to clippers. I remember oh. that, so that it would just keep the it would keep the the <laughs> hair from hitting the yeah. ground. But yeah, exactly. uh, yep. I but it, so it's slightly different than a Floby. Floby sucks you. You have longer hair yes. or whatever. It sucks it up. Longer guys. Whoa, whoa, yes. whoa. You yeah. know what? Well, I'm surprised. And you can see the interview with Clooney. He was dead serious. You can still see it on YouTube. It's like, I've used this for years. You know, crazy. Well, and, and here's I'm something. surprised guys. he didn't mention a tool that you have and you take everywhere with you. <laughs> One of these guys, these power banks, Thor takes two. Hey, with him there we everywhere go. Everywhere he goes. He has two fully charged power banks with him, and they're like three times the size. You can power a whole house with this power bank. Um, but no, there's a smart. You, you know everything that you're has on, <laughs> on electronics. So you got to have a power bank with you, especially when you travel. What well, one one thing that I want to bring up because um, I know we were talking before like IT stuff. Um, so one of the, one of the things that I did is I got essentially one of those computer bags where it slots into the back, but it's, I, I don't know what the difference is about it, but the way that it's shaped, um, you can pack so much crap into it and it's got all the compartments to put your power banks, put your cords, have organization. And I literally travel, like it's a little bit different than Paul because Paul wants to bring his, uh, his pocket knife. I travel with literally one backpack and I could be good for like five days. That's how much that I can fit into it. And I have all my electronics. Nice. Yep. And uh, here's here's one, guys, that I really, really love. I've had this thing for 10 years. 10 years, okay? This is the... Uh, oh, doggone it. Is it going to do the thing where... Yeah. It's doing the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, this, is the, this is the Norelco Series 7... Phillips Norelco C Series 7000. And check this out. So you got the three guards for hair face and body that go onto the standard clipper watch this is that a nose clipper yep so then oh now oh, I, yeah. I can do my nose and my ears oh and watch this now i can do my face my balls no, now no, i can well, do my well, balls now i can do my face this thing is water resistant you can take it in the shower with you i've had it for 10 years the battery nice. is still good, and it was seventy dollars ten years ago. So just get the current version of this, guys. You will kill it. Yeah, yeah. Don't buy the Remington. The battery sucks. Hey guys, I got a tool that I don't think we listed yet. You know that like Karen neighbor that you always see that's always like 
nagging and bitching at you and you just like feel like her husband's life must be miserable yeah shotgun and she, and she wants to talk to you and you're outside checking your mail yeah always out there yeah i have the best tool for you awesome. what you need to do Let's hear it. is wear one of these <laughs> oh my god shout out to pearl this tool right <laughs> here got will banned. save you from con having a conversation with a dumb woman <laughs> or it might start a conversation with a woman either way it works <laughs> happy international women's month everyone brought to you by Glenn there Moore. we go and the final tool <laughs> yeah we're all tools aren't we Guys, we got 220 viewers right now. Nuke is doing most of the heavy lifting. Thank you, Nuke, for bringing all your ex-followers into here. Hey, hey man, my pleasure. They they uh, they know that this is quality and this is quality stuff. So, um, Nuke, I saw that post that you put out there. Which I, one? I, I heard Which what you one? Put <laughs> Which one? What you were going <laughs> to do if you got if they got 500 people in here? I heard what you did. We're not going OnlyFans, okay? Stop it. Ah, damn it. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Ass and bio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, bio in, terms of, uh, in terms of computer stuff, too, guys, it, this is sort of my industry. Getting a UPS is probably a good idea, an uninterruptible yeah, power supply. Yeah. So if, like, it, like, like, in the middle of a storm or something, the power knocks out, you still have internet. You can connect it to your internet uh, modem and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Anything that uh, continuity of power is important, especially in storms, uh, especially in, in when you really need power. Let's say you have kids and you need to keep your house cool or something like that. Anything that gives you content. So having a good generator, having a good power banks, batteries, all that stuff. I guess like you may live in an area where the, the weather's good, but like there's always that possibility for an outage. Like in 2021, Dallas or North Texas had that big freeze and there were people freezing to death because they just weren't prepared for those conditions right so it's like i personally will always want to buy a house with a fireplace if i live anywhere where it freezes i want to have like different tools and things that keep me warm and continuity of power in my house right um and all that so any i think speaking from an electrical standpoint i'm 100 percent thor will agree aj will, i mean everyone will agree anything that can help you keep that continuity power in your house that way if something the power goes out you have time to react and shut things down and have you know and grab your lights and stuff like that so i i highly recommend an ups for for stuff like that yeah. too like awesome. even all your servers like so like youtube uh, meta x all their servers they're all supplied clean power as we call it in the industry by ups's because the uh, utility power is dirty and everything so if that utility ever goes down there's about when you have a ups for a data center fully loaded one meg typically you have about 10 minutes of battery and that's enough time to get the generators on the bus to back it up. Yeah. Or for the power to come back. So it's actually a really good thought and it's more accessible today than before. Uh, 16 years ago, I built my own power wall and completely on grid off grid. It was quite a challenge, but it was also a hobby at the time to design. And I had, I had a guy that wanted to do it with me, but now it's very, very accessible. The one yeah. thing I would caution everybody against, because this is how you get into trouble leasing financing it i know that it's an easy way to get there but it, it it's just delaying you're not going to earn anything in the end you're going to get hit pretty hard mm. so yeah if you're going to stick around for a few years it's super worth it like nuke said but be sure and look at the numbers too i've had too many friends look at what i did and then go finance it and be on the bad end of it yeah um i All would say that like yeah. there's like Tesla batteries now. Yes. There's uh which uh and also like I like a generator enough to keep your family warm or like the 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 food from spoiling over like maybe one or like three days, you know. Oh, they so, make really good generators now that are dual fuel, even triple fuel. Yeah. So that yeah, that's good. And have extra fuel. And then you know, if you want to have extra like my my dad had a water tank built on, on top of the house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we use gravity and then we'd have water whenever the water went out. So, you know, I'm all about preparedness and stuff like that. I should be more prepared, but I think continuity of power is nice to have when everyone else is shut out, um, especially also continuity of like heat and or air conditioning or whatever yeah. you need. Yeah. So. Here's a good one for you. If you get, if you can get your hands on it and there are a dime a dozen in the junkyard, get yourself a, a Mark IV generation Volkswagen ALH TDI engine, 1.9 liter, 
hook it up to a generator or an inverter and run it that way. That engine will literally run on freaking used motor oil, yep. vegetable oil, everything. <laughs> if, you yeah. have if you have a night like Mike did last night, his piss could power that engine. That's a fun project right there. <laughs> Not his piss, but the <laughs> damn Mike. How do, how do you know? It's Mike's some sandwiches right now. Get him some sandwiches. No. <laughs> Give me That's some true. protein. There's no experience there, so you may be right. <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you can figure out how to hook up a generator or inverter, like shaft driven one to a, uh, say an 01 Jetta ALH TDI, you're, you're good. Just friggin' save your used motor oil and run that as your generator fuel. There you go. That's a use for those stupid seed oils. Dump them in there. Literally, it gets some of the best Something gas useful. mileage when you run pure vegetable oil through it. Mm. So we got some guys. We got a we got a wrap here, AJ. Um, so, so uh, go, go ahead, Mike. Let's start with some... you. Oh, I let's start was, with you, Mike. Let's start I was, with you. I was not intending to to, to segue <laughs> like that, but guys, um, the ultimate tool is in here. This is the tool that no one can take from you. From you, this is the tool that doesn't break and only gets better with time, but only if you take good care of it and only if you sharpen it and hone it, your body may break, but you have your mind and your, and the man that you are is up here. So take care of this level this up. And this is the greatest tool you will ever have. And it will never let you down. Well said. Well said. Well said, man. Let's uh let's give a shout out to uh Shuk the Pintar um real fast before we go to Glenn. Two dollar super chat. Citron uh C fifteen car. That shit is unbreakable. Oh ho ho we can we can French drive. Engineering. We can is drive that a challenge? across we can drive across the field and a basket of eggs will not break. That is what they say, yes. Oh. Get the baguette <laughs> and the white flag. You're sounding like Laurent now. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, final thoughts, where we can find you and all that good stuff. Well, all the final thoughts are the ones at the strip club. So they're the final ones for sale. Um, you know, uh, you guys can find me on my channel. I'm going to be rather busy this upcoming week. I'm not going to say with what per no. se, but it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a good busy time. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to have some stuff coming up. I'm going to do some, uh, I'm doing another show later on today on <laughs> oh, oh, women! I, I thought you meant like yes, body. Yes, body. international women's <laughs> chairs. Um, you know, I think like you know, this is gonna be a fun one. Anybody that's on the Dragon Ship want to hop on? It'll probably be an hour or two after this. But if any of you guys want to hop on, it's gonna be fun. A lot of tongue in cheek, and um, you know, talking about them women's in a good way. Yeah. Um. So it's gonna be fun. Other than that, um, tomorrow, me and Thor, we got some stuff we're gonna do. It's gonna be fun. Do a workout and uh maybe a Titan, a Trident. I'll wear my helmet. Which one? <laughs> the fall helmet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all be good. Paul. Uh tune into my podcast Monday. I'm gonna be live. Uh, I'll be revisiting Rolo's nine iron rules as a refresher for some of you and for new guys coming into the space. Other than that, uh, get my book, guys. If you have an Audible subscription or a Kindle subscription, consider using your next credit on my book. And if you want a, a, an autographed physical copy, you can order those directly from me. I'll drop a link to that in the chat here. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Nuke. Uh, guys, shows 7 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Talk about red pill topics, dating, and all that stuff. Um, and all that. And then tomorrow we have Post Zero with the with the guys. We're gonna talk about uh, what was we gonna talk about? Um, man. Oh, how to be alone. Alone time. How to how to learn to be alone as a man and value your alone time and use it wisely, right? Uh, so we'll be talking that about that tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central. Uh. And uh, yeah, guys, follow me on Patreon. I just put, uh, dropped a new article uh, or a new essay on Patreon. And uh, yeah, and my final thoughts are as such. Um, like I said before, the information you have, you you have the library of Alexandria in your pocket. Use it wisely. You can use it to destroy yourself, right? Or you could use it to make a better life for yourself. So the choice is yours. If you choose to use it to make you angry or or for sedations all the time, right? 
then you know you you wasted this opportunity there's a lot of people in history that wish they had the power you have so use it wisely and all that stuff and uh have the right tools for the right job and that's all i have i gotta go guys so thank you thanks nuke thank you thanks nuke thank you Duke. and then uh huds thank you again for that beautiful uh beautiful thumbnail we have in the background Appreciate yes, it, absolutely man. absolutely you look uh very dapper so thank you. um i my final thoughts in this whole thing um don't wait to fix your problems uh we have these things happen like your car breaks down or uh power shuts off or you uh you have a leak or something that you have to take care of uh it's better to there, there's a reason why they always said always be prepared like in boy scouts uh it's the truth it's the truth um, so make sure that you're always learning about this type of stuff. There's a lot of great suggestions that came through on this show. Um, so definitely, you know, look into some of those things. Um, that's, that's really it with that. Don't wait, don't wait to, uh, to be prepared. And then where you can find me, uh, best place is Instagram. Um, you'll see some of my content there. Um, if you want to reach out for dating coaching or have any questions, go ahead and hit me up. Um, and then I'll put announcements for other shows and things that I'm doing through that. Copy. Thank you, Hoods. And then I'll go real fast and hand it over to the man of the hour, Thor. So with me, um, I think we said it all very well in the show. Uh, tools, because I grew up kind of like poor, so I kind of learned how to distinguish certain tools. And everything is a hammer, guys, to me. Um, but <laughs> one piece of knowledge that I would like to give everyone is learn your metric to standard conversions, like your 9 16 mm. 14 millimeter, 7 16 uh, mm. I think that's like a the thing that's 11 can they uh, get five a eight, eight mil to start with yeah yeah uh three quarter 19 11 16 17 like that kind of stuff understand that and if you're missing a tool like most cars nowadays or most things nowadays are metric if you're missing something you can quickly think of the standard equivalent and go in there and no 10 mil and three eighths do not match even though they are close so that's why i say always buy as many 10 mils as you can um yeah. other than that you guys can reach out and find me all my links right there igx youtube arms uh the gmail account if you guys have any questions about detailing or tools feel free to hit me up on any of those and with that uh thor it's all yours hey thank you you guys want me to take us out today too i can certainly do that yes please, uh, you, you can find me at uh, become durable.com of course after you use your audio credit to listen to paul's book which is a fantastic book take a look at my book too a dominant masculine presence i think you guys will find definitely value there uh, particularly with the seven skills of a dominant masculine presence. Once again, I appreciate all you guys here on the Dragon Ship, and I will uh, do my best to get to as many of these as I can in the coming weeks and even hopefully more in the future. Um, let's get somewhere and take us out. And gentlemen, until next time, on the Dragon Ship, Skull. Ready to upgrade your dating game? Introducing Paul's ultimate online dating course for men. Master the art of online dating and discover Paul's genius method to meet amazing women off the apps. The real secret sauce? Discover how to leverage Facebook and Instagram to meet amazing women in your local area. Not all hot women are on dating apps, but every woman on the planet is on social media. Learn how to find and connect with them with this revolutionary course. Say goodbye to swipe fatigue and hello to meaningful connections. Ready to transform your dating life? Click the link in the description now and start your journey to success today.